Thanks for joining us on NewsA, coming to you live from the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation. My name is Zulaya Tuhamid. These are the headlines. Over a thousand pupils in Port Loco and Cambia received learning materials from the Konotsky Foundation. Ministry of Transport and Aviation continues compensation at Lomli, where transport terminal is designated under the Integrated and Resilient Urban Mobility Project. And NRA proposes integrated tax system to improve tax compliance. These and most of these are lined up in this edition of the news, but first, let's have a coronavirus preventive message. You see where them people here wear the mask, then fine? Well, now so you self for wear your mask. Coba, you know, so you much all them where you didn't near other person. Let's continue to mask up and stay safe. If you're joining us, this is news now coming to you live from the Sierra Broadcasting Corporation with Ms. Latu Hamid. Now, one key success of the Free and Quality Education Initiative is the unprecedented upward enrollment of pupils in government and government-assisted schools and distribution of teaching and learning materials across the country, which has reduced the burden on parents. To further this, more than 1,000 pupils in six schools in Botsloko and Cambia districts have received teaching and learning materials from the Cutting Tree Foundation. Ibrahim Samuel witnessed the distributions. Smiles we are put on the faces of these pupils attending schools in these vulnerable and hard to reach communities and whose parents are finding it difficult to support their education. Most of these children are coming from very poor families and single parents largely embarking on petty trading and subsistence farming. With the introduction of the free and quality education by President Bill some three years ago, it was a sign of relief to parents and has attracted massive enrollment of pupils in government and government-assisted schools, especially in economically challenged and hard-to-reach communities. Non-governmental organizations like Country Foundation, working extensively on education, is implementing government's efforts in distributing essential teaching and learning materials to people in deprived schools and construction of schools in communities. They operate in Port Loco and Cambia districts. More than 1,200 of these pupils under their sponsorship programs have received support of essential teaching and learning materials and peers of uniform each. This according to the Chief Executive Officer of the Foundation, Juan Kamarakista, was meant to help in achieving the free and quality education, the flagship program of the government, and to reduce burden on parents. We do this to complement the efforts of government in the area of education. We know um, the government is doing so much, but as an organization, we are reaching out also to the most vulnerable communities. Three schools in Port Loco, Josephine Bakita Pre and Primary School, Susan's Mans Memorial Baptist Junior Secondary School, and Michael Kamara Memorial Primary Schools were targeted for the support, and more than 400 people received uniforms, teaching and learning materials. For Cambia District, more than 600 people in Cambia District Council Primary School, DBR Foundation Junior Secondary School, and Cambia District Education Council Primary Schools we are catered for. To support the flagship program of the New Direction Government, which is a free quality education aimed at human capital development. Students, parents, we have seen the work of the government in our schools. When you visit some of our schools, we have realized that there are a good number of textbooks available in the schools. And we are in to provide additional textbooks and also 
teaching and learning materials. Supervisors of schools for Putuloko and Kambia districts, Abubakar Kabia and Abdullah Jamo said the support to the pupils and schools was timely, noting has boosted supplies of the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Education. They said the Contitui Foundation was one of the ministry dependable partners in the education sector, noting the distribution of school and learning material would help to improve learning outcomes. Parents and ed teachers of the various schools were full of praises, saying that the support has reduced the burden of buying textbooks, uniforms, and learning materials for their children, especially at this difficult time, coupled with the COVID-19 effect. Abraham Samura, Freetown. The Ministry of Transport and Aviation is continuing payment for compensation of two persons occupying the car wash settlement in Lomli. The area is among a number of places identified in Freetown for construction of transport terminals under the Integrated and Resilient Urban Mobility Project, which is meant to improve the public access to transportation in urban areas. So Ibrahim has details. The construction of the transport terminal in Lomley is expected to affect about 200 people living mainly in the car wash community. The place is home to Petit Cedars, Utukaraj, and Lorry Park where people bound for Mambo, Laka and other places into the deep west of Freetown can access their transportation. Those affected include Cedars, car mechanics and other people living in what looks much like a slum community. The compensation money ranges from 10 to 100 million yuans, depending on the structure one is vacating. It is expected to cover rental expenses and construction of new structure, depending on what one wants to do with their compensation. Madam Rugia Tukonte has just received her check and is expected to vacate her shop in three weeks. She has been in her shop for almost two years. She said that even though the compensation was not commensurate to the property she is leaving behind, she was pleased that she was given way to development of the country. Usman Samura also echoed the same sentiments. Local chief of the Kawash community, Pa Almami Bangura, urged his people to make judicious use of the money by relocating to safer and suitable areas and made sure that they leave the premises within the stipulated period. The Integrated and Resilient Urban Mobility Project, which was launched in 2019, is expected to end in five years after the completion of four key project objectives, which include increased access to quality public transportation, improved climate resilience, and building institutions and human capacity. The project is also designed to decongest key routes, introduce traffic management measures like traffic and street lights. SLBZ News are Suribem reporting. Well, now the 117th anniversary celebrations of the Albert Academy, the school administration has led various events that will spice up the anniversary celebration. A sponsored work um, also, Foundation Day and Thanksgiving service are amongst the programs listed. Well, the theme for this year's anniversary celebration is the same old, all the new now, geared towards changing the dynamics of the school. Well, ha I have been joining the studios by Mrs. Zainab Atsaria um, Kaba, Chairperson, 117th Anniversary and Thanksgiving Committee. Um, good afternoon and thank you for joining us on the book. Good afternoon. Yes, um, as a female who went to that school, you are the second to last batch that went there. Give us a sight of what it was back then. It was exciting back then, considering that I left an all-female school, where I did Form 1 to Form 5, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Secondary Vocational School, Lone Star, Body Home. And then I came to the Albert Academy, a co-ed school. It was very exciting. Um, it was in those days, during the 1997 era, Albert Academy always produced the, the top result in all standardized exams. In fact, when I sat the A-levels 1997, Albert Academy produced more than 40 A's in economics during that year. So it was an exciting period. It, it was, it, 
female were were very um, encouraged to go to Albert Academy, and some of the most influential women in this country um, went to the Albert Academy. Okay, so that shift, form. yes, that shift from a course um, education as where boys and girls went to um, to now that it's, all, it's an only boys school. How far has the school gone? Do you think you know the school has uh, made a steady progress in terms of grades? Well, um, the 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 theme for this year's celebration is the same all on you now. Has the school done more? Have we made progress? Um, today, I just we just finished Founders Day and I rushed into the studio here. Speakers and speaker over and over today, we all want to use this moment as a time of reflection. A school that has produced president of this country, a school that has produced leaders all over in every MDAs you go, academicians are leading and beyond Syria. So we want to know how far we have gone or what we do. Of course there are challenges. Reasons why today we launched two things. The strategic program plan, which is like our roadmap that will guide us within the next five years what we need to do in terms of development um, of our alma mater. And we also launched the school project, the pavement of the school ground. For years, everybody goes to the Albert Academy, the dust and what have you. So we're going to pave the school ground. We're not only going to pave the school ground, we're going to have state of that sports center and all of that. It's an exciting time for Albert Academy. Okay, in terms of infrastructure and development, which you've highlighted, it's ongoing. Uh, you know, I spoke to uh, an alumnus earlier this afternoon, and he made mention that another area that is looked into is that of the fencing of the school to ensure that, yes, the safety of the children is maintained, and those who you know, many a time want to skip school will be will be checked. How do you intend to work on that? That's that's a very good question. Um, on the strategic program plan, first of all, the strategic program plan was built by experts and the academy family, the school administration, the school board, um, the parent teachers, alumnus all over the world. So we look into it and say, okay, what are our challenges? Let's look back to our history. What are the challenges? What are our solutions and what do we intend to do in terms of maintenance and going forward? So once we, we've put all of that together and every year we're taking an action plan there, and then we work on the action plan and celebrate it next year. So we've launched the pavement of the school ground this year, which we are going to celebrate, which will be done way before next year, but we will celebrate it next year. Another thing on the strategic plan that we are also working on is bringing the school back to one shift. That's going to take um, a little while, but we're working towards it. And um, we, we are thankful that the administration is also cooperative and they're working towards decreasing the number so that we get back to one shift because the Albert Academy was one shift. Okay, let's now talk about counseling, you know, at the school as of now, the Albert Academy School. How effective have the alumni been in terms of not just giving books, but, you know, um, support to kids in terms of, you know, physical need and the likes? Well, the alumnus all over the world have been very, very supportive. I, for one, my background is from the Washington, D.C. chapter. I started in the Washington, D.C. chapter as a Secretary General, Social Secretary, Vice President, over a span of about, I'll say, 15 years or more. And now I, I spend most time here. I'm here now. And then collaboratively, like with the pavement of the school run, it's a collaborative effort. The Washington, D.C. chapter has already assured us that all their funds for the Thanksgiving is coming to what's the pavement of the school run. So is the UK chapter. And um, we are all over the world wherein we give mentorship also to students. I had an, I was somewhere the other day and one academician who is also a very smart student, he said he wants to become an international journalist. So we find ways to link them up to, to influential people that are following their path of study. That's also on the works. And wherever you go, any offices you go, as soon as we knock on the door, academicians, they're very, they welcome they welcome us very easily. Okay, so quickly um, on the celebrations you have planned, what do you have in mind to do? Well, on Saturday we did the sponsor work. I think that's the longest work for most people. We walk from Shaker Stevens um, Lodge to uh, Jala Avenue in Lomley Beach, 
that was a very long walk, but it was very well attended and we did well. And today we had our Founders Day, Albert Academy Turn 117. The school was born on October 4, 1904. We just had the celebration in school. It was very well attended with um, academicians, dignitaries, and the pupils. It was very exciting. That was where we launched both the pavement of the school ground and the strategic program plan and we targeted the cl class groups there were donations everywhere from different class groups okay thank you very much for taking your time to talk to us on news uh, congratulations once more thank you very much thank you yes um she is a uh, tira kaba chapter seen 117 anniversary and thanksgiving committee on the albert academy as celebrates by foundation day we continue with more stories making the news over the years the national revenue authority has been facing difficulties regarding the full compliance of business people pay by taxes to the authority such challenge has prompted the authority to expose the integrated tax system which will now allow business people pay their taxes digitally jonathan turner reports National Revenue Authority has been adopting various systems and models for improved revenue administration. They are sometimes seen as a possible solution to problems such as low rates of tax compliance, ineffective tax administration, staff and corruption. The proposed integrated tax system will add to the existing ASICODA system and electronic cash register system that the NIA is using. The reforms of the National Revenue Authority with the integrated tax system will be completely digital and that by December all taxpayers will be able to use the NIA portal which aims at the congesting crowd in various NIA premises and a call center hub that will be established to get constant church with all business entity. Why do we want to do that? One, we have a responsibility as NI, not only to generate revenue, but we have a responsibility to ensure that um, the taxpayers are not spending too much in complying with the tax rules. So with the iTax system, you can actually be in your uh, area of uh, comfort area, and uh, you do your filing, you do your registration, you do your filing, you do your payment. And uh, so that minimizes the cost of actually complying with the tax rules. Also, we have the responsibility to ensure there is fairness in the system. Now, what normally happens is that when you are in the money system, it's really difficult to know how the taxpayers are being treated. The new iTax system will enable NCRA and NIA to create an iTax account for business entities using national identification number which will enable a business-friendly environment for all key players in the revenue sector. The SIA has uh, taught it wise to collaborate with NRA to make sure that every taxpayer is using the NIN. The NIN is very, very, very much useful because for every citizen in this country, we have the biometric data of that person. To foster the change, all business entities must register their businesses with email addresses added to their phone numbers. Stakeholders in the business sector embraced the change and they promised to pass on the message to their workers. One of the tax providers for importers, we are here to understand the process as well, but to guide you accordingly when it comes out. Um, we all learn that this is a step, so we are here to try to understand as much as possible. So we in turn can feed information to our, our customers that comes out. So it's a pleasure being part of this. It is expected that the new integrated tax system will create a huge impact on the revenue collection by the National Revenue Authority. In the 2020 and 2021 fiscal years, NI was not able to reach their target due to the COVID-19. But the authority was able to generate 717 billion loans from January to June 2021. For SLBC News, 
John Abraham Tona reporting. Rongo Investment and Mine Corporation operating in Kono District has employed 50 youths within its primary host mining community of Kumao Inimiko Chiefdom in the district. The move by the company comes following the recent protests against the company by some aggrieved youths within the community after the company had asked those occupying some parts of the company's mining concession to vacate. From Kono, Joshua Petticoy sent us this report. The recent impasse between the Wongo Investment and Mining Corporation and the youth of Kumawo community triggered a peaceful dialogue and created room for the huge employment. The country manager for the company, Muktada Tunis, says the newly employed 50 youth will now serve as security vigilantes for the company in order to help to prevent intruders from mining illicitly within the company's mining concession. According to him, the youth were asked out of the company's concession because of the laws of Sierra Leone that do not permit company to give its mining concession to other people for mining. He described the excitement shown by the people of Como as a solid foundation for peace and development in the country. The chairman of the Chiefdom Security Vigilante and councillor of Ward 077 in Nemikoro Chiefdom, Aya Augustine Kufuma, said they would ensure regular interface for the development of effective pathways and give periodic updates as stipulated in the obligation and objectives of the Memorandum of Understanding between the Wongo Investment and Mining Corporation and the Chiefdom Vigilante Group. The regional manager for the National Minerals Agency in Kono District, Kai Levy, said they will support a peaceful coexistence between mining companies and the community people in the district and applaud the company for the latest development in Kumau community. Statement from the youth chairman and queen and town chief of the community denounced the violence and called on young people to channel their issues for a peaceful resolution. They called on the company to think about providing a location for the artisanal gold miners in the community as the company's concession covered the entire township, he added. That report was sent in by Joshua Petticoy and read in the studios by Mary Masuma. Now, as a way to respond to their corporate social responsibilities, King Homer Investment um, Company has supported the cyber unit of the Sierra Leone Police with logistical items. The items presented was to empower the unit to effectively discharge their duties. Emmanuel Samuel witnessed the official handing over ceremony. Improvement of technology grows daily, and as such, the cyberspace also expands with these improvements. Keeping this all-going space under control can only be possible with sophisticated equipment. The country's cyberspace is currently under serious attack, and cyberbullying is on the increase, which authorities find difficult to tackle because of the unavailability of the materials. These items are expected to empower the cyber units of the police, which they are grateful for. The gesture is very, very, very timely. As you know, times are now moving from traditional to digital. The items police commissioner Lahai said will make them do their forensic investigation, which they have the required lab for. Said they will ensure a clean and safer cyber environment for the country. Director of Community Affairs, Kingo Investment Company, Judith Corsair, said they swiftly respond to the request of the police because they know how important it is for a nation to protect its cyberspace. Manuel Samoa, SBC Freetown. Fourteen member states of the United Nations, including Sierra Leone, 
have moved to adopt 216 recommendations that promote, protect and respect human rights at the ongoing 48th um, regular session of the Universal Periodic Review Working Group Mechanism of the Human Rights Council in Geneva, Switzerland. The permanent mission of the Republic of Sierra Leone to the United Nations Office in Geneva and a high-level delegation from Sierra Leone led by the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Anthony Bliwa, delivered a statement on behalf of the President and the people of Sierra Leone. We we'll now bring you an excerpt of the Minister's statement following by the Commissioner of the Human Rights Commission, Sierra Leone, Patricia Danema. A consultative process to review these recommendations was commenced. The IMC, the government's interministerial Human Rights Council, which has a UN official and civil society representation, and the Human Rights Commission as technical advisor, met and discussed the recommendations. This consultative and transparent process helped us in our decision-making process. In the addendum my government submitted to the UPR Secretariat, we reported that Sierra Leone accepted 216 recommendations and noted 50, 58 recommendations. Although the number of accepted and noted recommendations remain unchanged, I wish to make the following corrections and clarifications. Recommendations 218, 257, and 267 that we previously accepted are now noted. We will seriously consider them in the context of our framework for deliberative decision making and the wide national consultations because they involve matters of deep and entrenched cultural practices. On the other hand, recommendations 15 111 and 172, which we previously noted, are now accepted. I'm very pleased to update this Council that, in addition to our existing laws on protecting the rights of migrant workers, as recently as 25th August 2021, my government ratified and registered with the International Labour Organization here in Geneva the Migrant Workers Supplementary Provisions Convention number 143 of 1975. So there are several relevant legislation and institutions that protect the rights of human rights defenders. In October 2020, a new protection law for human rights defenders, including journalists and media practitioners, was added when my government abolished the 55-year-old criminal seditious libel law in Part 5 of the Public Order Act of 1965 and ratified the Independent Media Commission Act of 2020. We also enacted a new legislation in 2020 which granted civil instead of criminal powers to the Independent Media Commission in regulating mass media institutions in Sierra Leone. In Sierra Leone today, no journalists, politicians, no human rights defenders and activists are imprisoned for expressing their views or defending the human rights of others. The Human Rights Commission of Sierra Leone is a grade A status national human rights institution that advises government on human rights issues. The commission acknowledges that 216 out of the 271 recommendations we accepted and 58 noted by the government. The commission welcomes government acceptance of recommendations 27 to 45, which highlights its commitments to continue the constitutional review process, being one of its voluntary pledges, and also its commitments to support the work of the Human Rights Commission in the protection and promotion of human rights. The commission, however, urges government to give further considerations to the noted recommendations, particularly recommendations 11, 12, 13, and 174 to 179. These recommendations are meant to improve the situation of women and girls with reference to combating discrimination and addressing acts of violence such as female genital mutilation. I draw the attention of the government to its continued commitments in protecting and promoting the rights of women and girls 
at various levels and should not be lent in its progressive realization in all aspects. On behalf of the Commission, I deeply urge the government to implement the voluntary pledges presented at the UPR, which include reviewing the Sexual Offences Act 2019 as amended to bring its provisions in line with the country's Child Rights Act of 2007 and international standards on child rights. As a commission, we're aware of the challenges that might be posed for smooth implementation of the recommendations. However, we remain committed to following up the progress on implementation in collaboration with government, civil society organizations, and our development partners to ensure that these commitments make positive impact in the lives of rights holders. of the Human Rights Commission, Sierra Leone, Patricia Ghanema, speaking there. Now, where the single habit of alcohol consumption can change a person's life, a simple effort of breaking the chain of addiction can also bring a huge change in that a person's lives and even in society. It is against this backdrop that the outgoing chairman of the Health Network, Sierra Leone, Robert Cabo, has called the government to implement strict laws to prevent alcohol Alcohol, alcohol abuse and alcoholism. He made this plea when giving a statement during the observation of World No Alcohol Day. Emmanuel Samoa has more. Reducing availability and enhancing health, which is the theme for this year's No Alcohol Day celebration, speaks to the growing number of addiction in the country, especially among young people. Alcohol Head of Scientific Support, said the headquarters, Commissioner of Police, Joseph Lahai, said, was currently the worst drug in the country. Its production, uncontrollable distribution and sale, he highlighted, is of grave concern to police. Fines that are being made for these offenses are so minimal that they cannot deter the perpetrators from putting their out to arms. So, if they are here, Mr. Chair, how the view that in your final report, the group, we are concerned about the fines. The laws are now too old. While the Director of Non-Communicable Disease and Mental Health, Ministry of Health and Sanitation, Dr. Santigi Sisi, classed alcoholism as endemic in the country. He has stated that no one gets addicted to alcohol willingly. Rather, Seas of events normally lead people into such habits. One of all the comes as an opportunity, comes as an opportunity to build this series, I uh, mean, raise awareness to ensure that consequences of alcohol is highlighted. Dr. Sisse warned young people to desist from drinking alcohol and smoking sisha, as both are not fashion but destroyers of people's health and social life. Outgoing chairman of Health Network Sierra Leone, Robert Kondema Kagbo, said the observation of such awareness raising day was to help the society become aware of the severity and depth of the issues. He continued that because there are no strict policies that regulate alcohol, its abuse is on the increase. Robert called on government to implement strict policies to prevent alcohol abuse. To prevent laws to prevent alcohol abuse, to prohibit the sale of alcohol to anyone under the age of 18, the Bill of Rights, the Rights Act, and other regulation of alcohol use, the Bill that driving points and conservations, the private policy, the policy and surveillance. He said if stringent policies are implemented, then the harm caused by alcohol abuse will reduce to a very large extent. Emmanuel Samoa, SLBC Frita. 
Child Rights Coalition Sierra Leone has called on government to, among other things, pass a more comprehensive amended child rights bill that addresses all inconsistent and discriminatory clauses. The position from the human rights organization came following recommendations on the working group on the Universal Periodic Review. Joseph to witness the briefing at the Atlantic Hotel in Freetown. 274 recommendations were proffered covering all areas of concern for the universal periodic review process, including access to justice, rights to adequate standard of living, and rights to health, among others. The coalition was pleased with government's acceptance of over 200 of those recommendations with key focus on child labor, child trafficking, and rights to education, but was concerned about over 40 recommendations that were rejected, stressing that they affect children's rights. The coalition is however concerned that all the 50 recommendations that the government rejected affect children's rights. The 44 specific and 4 general recommendations on banning female genital mutilation, FGM, we are rejected without qualification. We are gravely concerned that current measures to address the human rights concerns of FGM are grossly inadequate to prohibit child FGM. Passing a legislation on protecting human rights defenders and repealing Part 3 of the Public Order Act are the two remaining recommendations that the government noted. It is our view that rejecting these two recommendations also increases the vulnerability of child rights defenders and child rights advocates to human rights abuses and further narrow the civic space for them. The organization further urges government to give more focus and consider issues surrounding child rights and welfare. The coalition further urges the government to ratify the, proto the optional protocol to the Convention on the Rights of the Child on a communications procedure acknowledging the legal empowerment of child survivors by giving them the capacity to take legal action on their own with child-friendly rules of procedure. To pass a more comprehensive amended child rights bill that addresses all inconsistencies and discriminatory clauses. To address child labor in apprenticeship, domestic labor, street, street trading, alcohol manufacturing companies, and in the agricultural sector. And lastly, to fully implement the radical inclusion policy to ensure that pregnant girls have unhindered access to school. She pledged commitments to monitor the implementations of recommendations that government has accepted. The Universal Period Review is a human rights mechanism that was adopted years ago to give states the opportunity to do peer review of other states on human rights issues and profile recommendations. SLBC. Joseph Toure reporting. Still to come on news, Nakovac takes COVID-19 vaccination to Western Area Rural District. And after 35 years, the Conservation Society of Sierra Leone is still raising concern over the loss of precious biodiversity areas in the country. This and more plus the latest in sports update. More to come. My name is Zulaya Tuhamid. Keep watching the news with me. Welcome back to Bizarre Live on the SLBC. Now, with improved supplies of COVID-19 vaccines, Navovac and the Ministry of Health and Sanitation have intensified the vaccination exercise to boost their protection among its eligible population against the disease. The focus is now on the Western Area Rural, where village headmen have promised to take the lead, ensuring that each village in the district is vaccinated to scale up the intake of the jab. Ibrahim Samuel witnessed the launch at the Western Air Rural District Council, Waterloo. These village headmen, drawn from York, Mountain, Koya, 
Waterloo and Banana Island, where the latest group, NACOVAC and the Ministry of Health, have targeted in the rolling out of the COVID-19 vaccines. NACOVAC, together with the Council of Village Headmen, would be embarking on a massive vaccination exercise in all villages in the Western Area Rural Districts. The move is aimed at intensifying vaccination exercise to bluster protection among its subjects against the disease. The different jobs of AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, Sinopharm, amongst other, would be administered during the vaccination exercise. Science has proven that the COVID-19 jab was one of the most effective weapons in fighting the coronavirus, which helps to build on the immune system against the pandemic. The Western Area Rural District headmen are very important in the fight against COVID-19. These are people who are very instrumental in their communities. They are the authorities.